The Battle of Tampere was a 1918 Finnish Civil War battle, fought in Tampere, Finland from 15 March to 6 April between the Whites and the Reds. It is the most famous and the heaviest of all the Finnish Civil War battles. Today it is particularly remembered for its bloody aftermath as the Whites executed hundreds of capitulated Reds and took 11,000 prisoners placed in the Kalavankangas camp. Chapter 1 – Background in the 1910s, Tampere was the third largest town in Finland with a population of approximately 60,000, including the suburbs. It was the most industrialized town in Finland which was considered the capital of the Finnish labor movement. Tampere had played a key role in the 1905 general strike and the town was a stronghold for the trade unions and the Social Democratic Party. As the civil war started in late January 1918, the Reds targeted the important railway junction of Hopamoki, 100 kilometers north of Tampere. The front line was soon established 50 to 60 kilometers north of Tampere and Tavastia Front became the major theater of the war. The large working class population and the railway connections made Tampere the main base for Red Guards although the Red government was working in Helsinki. On January 27, Tampere was completely under the control of the Reds. Tampere Red Guard had about 6,000 members, including 300 women, about 5% of the total. Chapter 2 – Siege of Tampere As the Red offensives failed in late February and early March, the Whites launched their operation against Tampere on 15 March. The aim was to Encircle the Red forces in the Tavastia front and then invade Tampere. Heavy fighting occurred in Jamza, Orivesi, Ruovesi, and Vilpula. The fiercest were the Battle of Lankipoia in Jamza on 16 March and the Battle of Orivesi two days later. The Red front collapsed and the troops withdrew towards Tampere where the Reds now had about 15,000 fighters. Instead of capitulating, the Red Staff decided to defend the city as long as possible. The Whites reached Tampere on 23 March and besieged the city with 17,000 men in the largest military operation of the war. Related battles were fought in the areas of Uliavi, Piakala, Mesakaila, Atalati, Lempala, Vesilati, and Totijavi, as well as further west on the Satakunta front in Kaku and Hamin Cairo. On 23 March, the Whites approached Tampere from the northeast and clashed with the Red Defense in Vimanin, 10 kilometers east of the city. During the next two days, the Whites also attacked the suburb of Mesakaila in the southeast and the village of Lempala, 15 kilometers south of Tampere, but were repelled. White artillery started firing on the town, and the Reds were forced to evacuate the eastern working class district of Tomela. The Whites captured the village of Kangasala. 15 kilometers east of Tampere, but using an armored train, 300 Reds managed to fight their way through advancing white troops and flee to Mesakaila. On the evening of the 24th of March, the Reds finally lost Lempala. The Whites were now able to cut the Riyamaki Tampere Railway, the main Red supply line. The Whites completed the siege on the 26th of March by taking the Ciro Railway Station on the Pori Railway. 20 kilometers west of Tampere in the Ciro village. On the same day, the Reds left their defense posts in Mesakaila, forming a new line next to the Kaliva district. The Whites also managed to capture Uliavi, located 10 kilometers northwest of Tampere. After taking Uliavi, the Whites instantly continued the attack on the western side of town in Epila and south in Haytenpa, but suffered heavy losses and were pushed back. The Reds, in turn, launched a 3,500-man counterattack in Lempala, under the command of Aino Raja. The Red Guards of Turku and Elaine attempted a simultaneous breakthrough along the southbound Helsinki Railway. Up to 30 fighters were killed and the armored train had to pull back. On 27 March, the fighting still continued in Mesakaila Kaliva area, Epila and Lempala. Chapter 3 – Bloody Thursday On 28 March, the Whites suffered the hardest daily casualties of the war so far, in what was later called Bloody Thursday. The Whites completed a large offensive in order to finally enter the town. 
The fighting concentrated to the areas of Kangas Cemetery and the Hippodrome, in the eastern outskirts of Tampere. The attack was launched at 9 a.m. After seven hours of fighting, the whites managed to repel the Reds from the Kaliva district but could not reach the town. Instead of the paramilitary white guards, the white army now used troops composed of conscripts and led by Jaeger officers. Conscripts were much easier to command and send into a heavy battle than voluntary white guards. Instead of disobedience, the problem was now the lack of war experience which in turn meant heavy losses. Three white battalions had at least 200 men killed, the total casualties were more than 50% of their strength in dead or wounded. Also the voluntary Swedish brigade and the German-trained Jäger troops suffered hard losses. The Swedes were dressed in white snow camouflage battle dresses, making them an easy target as there was hardly snow at all. The Jaggers wore green uniforms which easily stood out of the grey-suited privates. As a result, the 400-man Swedish brigade lost 20 and the Jaeger troops lost 27 officers. During the day, the Reds had 50 to 70 fighters killed. The Red leader Hugo Solmela died after a hand grenade accidentally exploded in his headquarters. He was succeeded by Werner Leitemarki. According to the French journalist Henry Laporte, Leitemarki drove in his car back and forth through the Red Lines to encourage his men. Laporte was a retired officer returning from an official mission to Russia. He later described his experiences of the Tampere battle in the 1929 book Le Premier Echec des Rouges. After the failed attack, the Whites halted their offensive for the next five days. Only the artillery was pounding the town. The artillery fire killed at least 20 civilians, some of them neutral or white supporters, and destroyed the working class neighborhoods of Tomela and Kitala almost completely. During this five day period, the fighting continued in Lempala, where the Reds still were desperately trying to break through. Chapter 4 Battle in the Town The Whites launched their decisive offensive on 3 April at 2.30 am. During the first day, they managed to take the eastern working class districts of Tomela and Kitala despite the heavy resistance. The fighting went on block by block and house by house. The Whites finally reached the Tamakoski River which divided the town in two. During the day, the Whites had 207 killed and the Reds 115 to 170. Also, nearly 20 civilians were killed. As leaving the town was impossible, people from the suburbs fled into the center. Churches and other public buildings were crowded with refugees, the local residents hid in their basements. 1,700 people took shelter in the Tampere Cathedral. One of the most famous operations of the battle was conducted on the same day. A white unit led by Jäger Gunnar Mellin took the Nasilina Palace on the Nasinkalio Hill along Halichuskatu, only to lose it again in the evening, as the main force was stuck on the east side of Tamakoski. Melin's troops executed 20 surrendered Reds in the yard of the Nassenlinna Palace despite the leaflets signed by the white commander C. G. Monaheim claiming whites would not shoot prisoners. On the next morning at 4 a.m., the whites crossed the Tamakoski River at several points, including the railway bridge and the Satakananselta and Haminsilta bridges. In the evening, they reached Haminpuisto Avenue on the western side of town. On the 5th of April, the Whites managed to take the rest of the town. The last red pocket was the city hall, defended together by male and female fighters. According to a legend, the city hall lasted this long as the Tampere Women's Red Guard refused to capitulate. The last city hall defenders finally surrendered at 5.30 p.m. The remaining Reds retreated to the western suburbs of Pianiki and Pispala. In the evening, a large group of Reds managed to flee across the ice of Lakes Puhiyavi and Nazijavi. Among them were Red leaders Werner Leitemarki, Ali Altonen and K.M. Eva. On 6 April, the Whites were about to attack the western suburbs, but at 8.30 am a white flag was raised on top of the Pianiki Tower, and the battle was over. However, there were still some lone Red snipers for a couple of days. 
Chapter 5, Casualties The number of casualties is quite unclear. The number of killed whites is usually estimated at 600 to 820 and the reds at 600 to 1000. A thousand reds and 200 Russians were also executed right after the battle. According to some sources, a mass grave in the Kalavankangas cemetery contains 2,751 reds of which 1,208 were killed in action. The War Victims of Finland 1914-1922 database knows the names of 824 whites, 1,087 reds and 67 are unknown or neutral. Notable persons who died in the Battle of Tampere were the Swedish historian Olof Palmer, members of the parliament Ernst Sari and Duo Lamus, editor and translator Matti Kivikas, the poet Johannes Silo, the Russian officer George Dvolatsel, and the Olympic athletes David Kolmanin, and Kalavul Jamar. Chapter 6, Aftermath The Whites started the executions right after the Reds surrendered. Up to 1,000 were shot as well as all the Russians in Tampere. Most of the executed 200 Russians were soldiers. The executed included also women and children, although captured women fighters were not systematically shot like the Whites did in Lati and V-Berg. Even people who were neither involved in the battle nor members of the Red Guards were imprisoned and killed. Dot, as the number of capitulated became too large, it was impossible to shoot everyone. More than 10,000 Reds were gathered to the central square, where they had to stand for nearly 24 hours. The prisoners were then transferred to a prison camp established in the eastern Kaliva district. During the next five months, 1,228 Reds died in the Tampere camp of executions, disease or hunger. Chapter 7, Memorials The statue of the White Army Commander C. G. Monaghan stands at the site where he was observing the battle. The controversial statue, was first suggested to the Coscipuisto Park in 1939 but was finally erected on a hill 8 kilometers from Tampere in 1956. Due to its remote location, the statue has often been vandalized, during the years by local anarchists and other left-wing radicals. Vapor den Patsas, by the sculptor Victor Janssen, is another statue commemorating the white conquest of Tampere. It was placed in the Hamin Puisto Park in 1921. The model of the figure was the far-right priest Elias Samojoki. The statue is holding a sword pointed towards the Tampere Workers' Hall on the other side of the park. The statue is often called Romin Yusi, after the nickname of the infamous white executioner Johannes Fromm, responsible of murdering more than 70 Reds. The Swedish Brigade commemorative plaque is placed near the Kalavankangas Cemetery. It is a work of the sculptor Gunnar Finn. The Red Memorial was erected to the Kalavankangas Cemetery in 1941. It was designed by the sculptor U.C. Hirtonen who was held at the Kalavankangas prison camp in 1918 at the age of 15. Another memorial is placed in Pispalo, where the last Reds surrendered. 